All right. Thank God for last night's rest this morning. Rise. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Grace is always giving me what I don't deserve. And mercy is not giving me what I do deserve. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. How are the brothers and sisters doing this morning? Everybody good? All right. It's good to be back here at Key Recovery. I'm Derek McKnight. My partner, Robin Hayes. I don't know. It's Friday. So I don't know where he at. But together we call the Minds of Men, nonprofit, spiritual organization. We don't deal with religion. Um, this morning we're going to talk about bad company can corrupt good character. Bad company yep. can corrupt good character. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Yep. All right. And, do, and and let's get here. Ignorance is expensive. Let me say that again. Ignorance is expensive. And I said that because ignorance means what? Not to know. Now I have, I had 13 dogs. You probably heard me talking about my dogs, right? Now we had to put two dogs down to sleep uh, because if anybody got puppies, anybody got dogs and love dogs, and it's a new, it's not new, it's new to me, right? Cause I'm talking about ignorance, right? It's called Parvo, Parvo, P-A-R-V-O. Mm -hmm. It's a disease amongst dogs that attacks dogs and attacks their white blood cells and it attacks their stomach and it makes them sick. It's like an age to dog. Yeah, like, yeah, and they get real sick, right? So my dogs, one of my dogs stopped barking. He stopped chasing. He stopped screaming. He stopped fighting and he stopped eating. And I knew something was wrong with him. But when he went to the bathroom and blood came out in his poop, I had to take him to the vet at 34 Fred Spruce and come to find out he had pulver. They said one dog got it. Most likely everybody got it. Mm -hmm. Except the older dogs who already got what? Vaccinated. So, so... We, he stayed, so um, Penn kept him sun, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and we took him to the vet up on Washington Avenue at 19th and Washington Avenue. And then um, my other two dogs, they got sick, and, and we took them to the SPCA, and they, they found out they had pulver, so everybody had to clear out of the SPCA. I didn't know how serious it was and how dead it is. It's just like when AIDS just hit the planet, right? And then boom, and everybody had to leave, and they had to spray the place down with bleach and all of that. I said, this must be serious, right? And that's why my dogs was looking the way they was, lethargic. Um, look, right, they came up on life. They was real depressed, real miserable, and I got real upset because ignorance is expensive. And I had to wind up putting two to sleep. And three of the dogs, we took them to the animal um, rescue mission down at 111 Huntington Park. And they got three of my dogs. So now we're down to what? Seven dogs. And one about to leave and go to my lady's sister house. So it'd be less poop to clean up, less piss to wipe up, <laughs> less mouths to feed, and less people in our bed when we're trying to get asleep, right? So it has its good and its bad. But ignorance is bliss. And God had to show me out of death comes life. Mm. Out of death comes life. And the disease of addiction where we suffer from wants us to be what? Ignorant mm. of what we suffer from. A lot of us know it lives between our two ears, but do we know the profile of the disease of addiction? It's like y'all seen the, what's the movie Predator, the first one. Remember that? Nobody can see the predator but the Indian guy. Why? Because he was spiritual. But the predator, he was like invisible. But with the, the Indian, he seen him in the trees and jumping from there and to there and to there. And my man, um, what's that guy who played the car wash? He robbed, tried to rob the car wash. Bill Duke. Yeah. <laughs> Shot up the whole woods but didn't see the predator. But the Indian who was spiritual seen him. So the disease of addiction is a spiritual disease. So if I'm spiritually sick, spiritually not in void, spiritually not home, spiritually dead, I'm in trouble, right? So I can be clean and crazy. Anybody there? Anybody clean and crazy? Any dressed up trash cans? Anybody trying to fake it till they make it? Who lips write checks that your life will never cash? I've been there, all right? So, so listen, I love illustrations, right? So I got a homework assignment, and let's get into it, right? Bad company will corrupt good character, all right? People, places, and things. People, places, and things. I need your help. It's a sign in Philadelphia. When I got to Philadelphia, it says, tell me I'll forget. Show me I will remember. Involve me I will understand. Anybody catch that? So to tell you, you might forget. To show you, you remember. To involve you. You will understand. So let's get into it. People, places, and things. 
bad company will corrupt good character, all right? People, what's some people that we gotta talk about? Any people, toxic people, I like specifics, anybody? Come on, people, places, and things. They said, we well, you know, we gotta watch that. A lot of times, so I'm my people, I'm my places, I'm my things. I take me wherever I go. If I'm not ready to stop using, it don't matter about these right here, listen, I'm gonna participate. Or I can be ready and committed to what recovery and don't give a damn about people or places or things. None of that is going to affect me of getting high. If anybody know about their triggers and if anybody know about subtlety, subtlety is dangerous. It's like it's like a man who try to what uh, try to finesse a woman. He's subtle. He's abusive, but he's subtle. No man who beat a woman up never say I'm an ass kicker. He never introduced himself that way. It's always, how you doing? What's up, sweetheart? What's going on? Going to go out? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If anybody's seen the movie uh, For Color Girls, the dude had her, but he wanted, he had control issues and wound up raping her. He wound up getting killed. So let's get into it, y'all. People, places, and things. People. Anybody? I love specifics. Anybody? People that we got to what? Stay away from. And we talk about family, man, we still can love them from a distance. But my life is important. My life is necessary. My life, my life is primary. It's first. It's God, me, then everybody else. And that's when we talk about the seven stages of what? Grief. Because it's the grieving process to leave people, places, and things. All right? So we can listen, let's identify this right here. Then we get into the seven stages of grief. All right? Come on. Y'all ready? People. Come on. I'm listening. Anybody? Listen. Any- People. What type of people that we got to what? Stop to separate ourselves from. We talk about people, places, and things. We say toxic. People are toxic. All right? How about um people who sell drugs? There we go. What else? Certain friends that smoke. Huh? Certain friends that smoke. That smoke? That get high. All right. That get high. Very good. Somebody said something over there. Certain family. Certain family? Yeah. Okay. All right. Certain family members. What else? Anybody else? Fam- um, people that sell drugs, that get high, certain family members. Friends too, okay. Certain, fr- certain friends. Negative people. Okay, very good. Certain friends and family, that's what? I put negative here, okay? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Anything else? People that we got to watch out for. Think about myself. Yourself? <laughs> stay away from myself. <laughs> okay, myself. I'm gonna put the old stay away from my old self, okay? Is that all right? Uh, old self. <laughs> I like that. Stay away from my old self. Very good. The old self. Selling drugs, people who sell drugs, people who get high, certain family members and certain friends that's negative. Stay away from my old self. People, anybody else that we can identify that we need to stay away from. Okay, we got pieces here, but we still dealing with people. How you doing, brother? Good morning. Mm-hmm. Anybody? Anybody? How about relationships? Am I going to relationships? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like what? Uh, how can we put that up here? Like one in recovery, one not. Okay, one in recovery and one not. Okay, and when somebody else says something, something else. Significant other. Significant other. Okay. Not so significant. Okay. Significant. Okay, significant other. All right. One in recovery. All right. How about how about those who steal? Anybody know about that? Liars. People who steal. Boosting. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How about lazy people? Vindictive. Okay. Spiteful. Okay. Jealous. Very good. Now we now we open it up. Now we warming up. Yeah, now we thawing out. People people who sell drugs, people who get high, certain family members, certain friends, that's negative. Stay away from the old self. One in recovery, the one is not in recovery. My significant other, liars, people who steal, people who boost, people who's lazy, people who's vindictive and spiteful and jealous. Any other people that we need to stay away from because my life depends on it. My life depends on it. People, places, and things. Manipulators? Very good. Very good. Manipulators. Manipulators. 
one thing I've come across is is healthy. Not like it's weird because where I work, like everyone's like healthy, and and because of that, they they live a life I can't live because I'm not there. Like I'm not strong enough to be able to disassociate from their behaviors. So like they're they're healthy people, they're positive people, but like they also go out and have fun in you know the party scene. Okay. So like I don't know how to say that. Like I like, got you. Healthy, Everybody hear that? Too they hard. work, they do the nine to five, do what they're supposed to do, but on the weekends, whatever, they go out and the party. They drink. Yeah, somebody yeah. can control their, 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 their uh, drinking habits. Uh-huh. Yeah. They, they control them. I, okay. I, I'm just not ready to be around that yet. Very and, good. I tricked myself before with that. Functional. That's functional. Social. Yeah. Social, I, functioning. Like, I like healthy people. I just, I need to be around people that are like me for right now. That's right. Yes. They don't do nothing. Yeah. Anybody hear that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's how be true. Very good, brother. Very good. All right, that's a big list. That's good, all right? This is helping me out. That sell drugs, that get high, certain family members and friends, that's negative. The old self, got to stay away from the old self. One in recovery, one not in recovery. My significant other, liars, thieves, boosters, Lazy people, vindictive, spiteful, jealous, manipulators, social functioning addicts. Anybody else we need to stay away from? Well, that's enough for now. If you find out more, we can talk more. How about places? What places we should stay away from? Bars. Very good. You talk about bars and delis? I know somebody in recovery work at a, uh, work at a bar. She's a bartender. <laughs> Anybody? What other places? Anybody else? Casino. Ah, oh, okay. He said the hood. All right, okay. Some of us don't have the money to leave the hood. But I got that's a good point that you're talking about. Can we be in it but not of it? Everybody, everybody hear that? I'm in the hood, but I don't have a hood what? Mentality. Poverty is a, a mentality. If I think poor, I talk poor. If I talk poor, I feel poor. If I feel poor, I walk poor. Poverty is a mentality. Prosperity is a mentality. If I think rich, speak rich, feel rich, I'm rich in spirit. I might be broke, but my spirit is rich. Everybody know what I'm talking about? And T.D. Jake said, listen, we were from the hood, but we didn't. We thought outside of the hood. They used to drive in what? Rich neighborhoods, saying one day we will get that house and we will get out for where we come from. So even though if I'm in the hood, I don't. The hood don't have to really be what inside of me. Is that is that true? Places, bars, delis, casinos, the hood. Whatever places we gotta stay away from. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm trying to think of something else. Places that we gotta stay away from. Nobody. The trap house. How about shoot dice? Let me say dice. Huh? Dice games, strip club. Thank you. There we go. We waking up. Script clubs. Why? Wow, that should have been first. Script clubs. <laughs> Script clubs. <laughs> Anything else? Come on. Let's go. I can't say the Phillies game and all that. Can we bring drug alcohol to be sold? Huh? Abandoned houses. Abandoned houses. Trap trap. Abandoned houses. Angel. Houses. Angel. Come on. Places. Bars. Bellies. Casinos. The hood. Angel. Dice games. Strip clubs. Abandoned houses. People, places, and things. We have places. Anything else that we need to stay with? Places. That we used to go, that we cannot go. That our feet is on automatic. We gotta catch ourselves. We just walk there involuntarily and we're there. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a habit, it was certain natural. Huh? Just certain neighborhoods. Certain neighborhoods, very good. I said that. I said certain neighborhoods. Okay. Certain neighborhoods. Certain neighborhoods oh, in the hood. Not certain neighborhoods. Well, okay. But some some hoods are cool. <laughs> so I'm definitely in the hood. I'm in West. Certain, certain neighborhoods, all right? And they, okay, how about things? Let's go there. Things. Let's put guns up here. What else? Drugs. Uh, drugs. What else? Alcohol. What else? Illegal money. Huh? Illegal money? Yeah. Tricking. <laughs> <laughs> Illegal money. Yeah, tricking. Very good. All right. Alcohol, drugs, guns, illegal money, tricking, things. Social media slash internet. Ah, very good. Social media. Yes, yeah, social media. We gotta watch what we watch what we look at. Is that true? Yeah. Who can't watch New Jack City? 
Yeah. Hey, Pookie, Pookie. Anybody Pookies in here? I used to be Pookie. Listen, I couldn't have a light in my house for four months. Anybody hear that? I used to be MacGyver on my lighters. I used to put my lighters up, yo, up to the ceiling. For real, I couldn't have no lighters in my house for four months. I was scared to go to the local bodega. The guy behind the cashier was a, a rose. We call them roses, stems. And down our father's chewy. And Chew, we know what the Chewy boy is for. You follow what I'm saying? So I had to stay away, me, had to stay away from things, paraphernalia. Ah, how you say that? <laughs> <laughs> pornos. Oh, no, not the pornos. Yes, that was big with me right there. Coke and pornos go good together. Let me keep moving. <laughs> That went together right there. You hear what I'm saying? No, for real. I didn't need no woman. Yo, matter of fact, you greedy. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right, things, places, and people. All right? People, places, and things that we got to what? Stay away from. Now it's becoming the grieving process. You know why? Because some of us want to what? Stay clean. Some of us want to what? Change. And change is not what? Easy. But I'm going to go through a grieving process if I'm leaving things alone, places alone, and people alone. It becomes a grieving process. Number one, shock and denial. Is anybody in shock or denial that you got to leave this alone? Is anybody in shock or denial that we got to leave people, places, these people, these places, and these things alone? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because some of us become what? Bored. That's big. A lot of us get bored. What do we do now that we leave this alone? No pornos? No, no my cousin? No drug selling? No lifestyle? Now what do we do? Talk to senior citizens? Feed squirrels? Look at cars go up and down the street? What do we do? Go to the library? What do we do? We find what? Our purpose. And if you can have fun in recovery, who know that? Go skating, go skiing, get a passport, get the hell out of here. Go see the world. It's a lot to do sober. But when your mind is focused on what, what we used to be, we think that's a what? A hard task. When I got my heart broke for my first girlfriend, and I was at Howard University, because on Howard University, there's a bunch of pretty boys on Howard University, and that's where she wanted to go. Well, that's when I was in Baltimore. And we drove up the, on the, the Howard University. She seen all these pretty boys, and she got excited. She got quiet. Her speech turned different. Her language turned different towards me. And I started to cry in the car like a big-ass baby in front of my father. My father said, what you crying for? I said, yo, she leaving me. It's going to be over. He said, shut up that madness. There's more girls out there, but I couldn't see other women because I was so trapped on who? Her. And that's how some of us is. To cry, we cry, we get mad, we scream because leaving this, we can't see nothing past that. Can we think this is what? Living it up. Not all of us, but some of us. Go to the Eagles game, sober. Go to the Flyers game, sober. Sixers game, sober. Places we used to, talking to women, sober. Having sex, sober. Dancing, sober. Socializing, sober. Not to use no drugs. Finding another way to have fun. And sometimes it becomes the grieving process in shock and denial. We get bored and we don't know what to do. That's why they got, you could be a peer specialist. That's why you can start a basketball league or softball league or um, any type of league to help the kids back, to help the kids out. Mentorship. They got a program called the Youth Study Center down in West Philadelphia. Little young boys, 13, 12 years old, not even 18, will, uh, will attempt murder charges. Who's better to reach them, help them, than a brother who lived that life? Or women. It's a lot to do sober. But we got to look past this and start praying for our purpose. And we come out of shock and denial because we're bored. Denial. That stands for don't even know I'm lying. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Money is a big piece. Who said they can handle money? When you get money, do the wrong thing with it. I was that way early in recovery. Me and my money was enemies. I like illustrations. I, look, look, check it out. Look, money, right? This was never the problem. I thought it was. I was here early and like, yo, 30 days clean. Me and my money was always problems. I remember we used to get 10250. Welfare used to give us that money back in the day. Along with our food stamps, we get 10250. Everybody remember that. For those who was on welfare, right? And I remember going, if, yo, the night before, plotting in my bunk who I was gonna be with, what girls gonna be with, who I was gonna cop from, and where I was gonna get high at. People, places. And things, doing the wrong thing with 
this change. So the heart had to get circumcised to change so the mind can change so I could do the right thing with this change. And it took time. And I had to have a payee to hold my money so I don't die with my money. A fool and his money is soon departed. Illegal money grow wings and fly away. That's why you can never keep money when you're selling illegal money. You always got to pay somebody off or somebody after you. Or you get big money, then you got to hide it. Who saw Fargo? You must see the movie Fargo? I like that movie. Yeah, I like that movie right there. And this dude, he, he was he was broke. He was uh, broke, gambling, whatever like that. And he got two gangs. He got with an Indian guy to get some gangsters to want to kidnap his wife for ransom because her father was a rich man. He worked for his father. And, 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 and the twist went, it went crazy based on a true story. And his wife dies. The guys, both of them, one, he, one shot, the other dude, got, he got shot in the face by the father. He put one of the dudes, he, he killed them with an axe. They put him in the what? Uh, what the, the weed? What the, what the weed joints? Grinder. Yeah, way grinder, right? And then the other dude go to jail. And nobody get the money. He buried the money. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of dollars. That's why illegal money, that's, you can't even rest when you got it illegally. But work, money that you work for, you appreciate that. So money was never the problem. This was the problem. And the heart is the problem. And to that change, I do the right thing. What? With that change, denial. How about relationships? Who said they, who said, who said they, they, they ready for somebody? You need somebody. You're tired of being alone. You're tired of masturbation. You're tired of what imagination? You want some fornication. You know what I'm talking about? Who brings baggage in another person's life? So much baggage and what they like, and guess what? They don't have no room for what their lives. How many men in here want women to wear, wear multiple hats? That's unfair. You my girlfriend. Now you my lover. Now you my wife without a ring. Go ahead, Bernstein. Listen, you my cook. You my therapist. You my doctor. You my psychiatrist. You my lawyer. You my everything. You my emotional um, a mattress. Listen, I look, and then she don't have, and then she got a life. Now she got to cook and she got to come home and take care of the kids and clean up the house because I ain't doing a goddamn thing. She wearing multiple hats and that's unfair. How many women here seek attention? And clothes is tight, right? You know, you, you know don't, don't, don't talk about some guys shot for what? Weak women. And some women, she, for, with, you know, look for what? Just the opposite. I got a phone call today. This girl I know right now, she listen, she don't want to work. She just OD'd. God spared her life twice. Within a month, she od twice in a month and called me right now at somebody's house right now trying to shack up in somebody's house. She said, go to a shelter because that's why they make shelters. Leave these people alone. Leave the people alone. Leave the places alone. Leave those things alone so you can live. But she don't want to hear me. But you keep calling my phone on nonsense. All you got to do is surrender She's in shock and denial also that she got to leave that alone. She knows she know what she need to do. She just got to do it. And when she get down there, she can get into shelter, get her own place, and get your own job and stop looking for men to do for you what you should be doing for your damn self. But she don't want to hear that. I'm tired of talking. I'm not talking no more. I'm not talking no more. I, but anyway, shock and denial. Shock and denial. Coming from what? Here. How about number two? Pain and guilt. Who in here is painful to lead this? And I got guilt and shame for what we did over here. I robbed my, I robbed my grandmother, I robbed my mother, father. That's a lot of what? A lot of pain there. And I was duct taped to my pain. Pain, guilt is what I did. Shame is how I feel. Guilt is what I did. Shame is how I feel. And I was duct taped to what? My guilt. And it was hard for me to get free spiritually because I could not forgive me. Anybody there? Anybody do anything out there that you can't forgive yourself and you still duct tape to your, to, your, to, your, to your guilt and it's still driving you crazy emotionally and spiritually and psychologically and we know better and we have values and we have principles and we have goals and we would have good parents and we was raised better than we, was, than we performing right now and when did we go wrong and what happened and all that madness? Who, who in retrospect is always up here thinking about what happened and why you did that and you know to why my life is this way is a mess. Who blamed God? Because God gave me a bad hand and I had to play the hand that God gave me. Shock and denial, pain and guilt. It's painful to leave here because I have a lot of guilt there and I'm familiar with that. Who remember Carlito's way? 
I remember Carlito. Carlito said, that's not me no more. Benny Bryant, yo, stop him right here. He said, now, if I ever, if I ever see you here in the club again, you die just like that. And he said, yo, you always hold for you, old man. You dead if I see you. Then he knocked him down the steps. And then you know the next move, he got to go. But he gave him a pass because he said, that's not me no more. I'm leaving this alone and try to do something else with my life. But the dude he gave a pass, he killed him. And even though we're walking out of the lifestyle, a lot of us got to be still on our back because some people don't give, they don't forgive. So we got to be strapped in recovery. Got to be on the lookout in recovery. Got to be ready to go to war in recovery because of the lifestyle I chose. Because some people don't give a damn if we're in recovery. They just remember what we did. Shock and denial, one. Pain and guilt, two. How about anger? Who's angry in here? Somebody angry? Suppress anger. Who suppress the anger then explode later? Anybody like that in here? You suppress it? Who's still mad what daddy did? Who's still mad what mommy did? Who mad at God? Who mad at your brothers or your siblings because they got this and they did that and you couldn't do that and you was denied and you was the black sheep of the family or you was Cinderella or you was Cinderella, Cinderella, Cinderella. You know what I'm talking about? Childhood, adolescence with no answers and we angry and we vindictive. Who parents split up and you was got mad at everybody? Mad at the whole world. Jeffrey Dahmer, I heard, watched the documentary on him. He been dead. Uh, why they show him regurgitating his life back again up on the TV? And they said, but, but it was a good thing that he did come back up on the ID channel. And they said when his parents divorced, he got crazy. And a little boy, something inside of him snapped. Then he saw dogs and, and, and cats and started chopping their heads off and putting them on sticks and making a museum of dead animals. And that's when he was a little boy. But when he got a grown man, he killed 17 men. I like to put out fires before they get started. My granddaughter, that's she come from my she don't come from my loins. How you doing, brother? She don't come from my loins, right? That's my ladies' peoples, right? But I love her, right? Truly love her. But at the same time, listen, you don't you don't play no tablet until you what? You do your homework. You find what I'm saying? You gotta what? You gotta do your homework first before you get on those tablets. But 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 sometimes they give her a pass, and that's wrong. TV shows we watch. Who know about Electric Company and, and, and Sesame Street? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody's raised on those cartoons, right? I mean, cartoons. On those TV shows, they taught us how to pronounce our words, pronounce colors. But you know what I'm saying? For real. And, 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 and Electric, hey, you guys, that's what anybody know about Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman was easy reader, riding a bicycle, reading everything he saw on the streets. And they, those shows were educational, but today we got one family guy. <laughs> Now we got um, Rick and Morty. <laughs> now we got Adult Swim, you know, Robot Chicken, all that madness, South Park, and our babies are watching. And there's nothing wrong with this cartoon, but it's a but, but you gotta watch, and they all cuss. And the kids listen, and they are sponges. Subtlety. That's how the enemy moves. How you doing, brother? Right. Shock and denial. First stage of grief. Talking about people, places, and things. This right here, we got to change. If we don't, I would die with them. Shock and denial to come out of that. Number two, pain and guilt. The guilt of what I did. The pain is how I feel. The anger and the bargaining. Who's passive aggressive in here? Who, who's sneaky? Who's passive aggressive? Anybody? Nobody, nobody sneaky in here? Ah, uh, okay. All uh, right, passive aggressive. That's like chicks calling on DHS on another, another woman because she don't like her. Yeah, that's passive aggressive. Like you can watch the mob, and the mob will entertain you, dine you, wine you, then kill you. <laughs> passive, well, excuse me. Passive aggressive. All right. Plot. Oh, oh, I'm selling wolf tickets, but I can't fight, and I pray he don't put his hands up. Passive aggressive. I could cuss everybody out in here, from James all the way down to the janitor, but I can't read or write. Passive aggressive. Passive aggressive, but I'm angry. And anger is a what? A second emotion. Second is a, a, anger is a second emotion, right? And if I don't address like my tree, see the tree here? Always show this the tree, because a lot of us we talk here, we talk fruits, and a lot of us, some of us we talk what? Roots. And roots is right here. Is where the Pandora box is. This is where the pain is at. This will bump my ass here. 
This is why I'm always in jail. This is why I'm miserable. This is why I put my hands on women. This is why I'm always running from the law. This is why I'm a fugitive. This is why I'm unhappy. This is why I'm taking meds right here. If I don't address this, I can get angry. And when we talk about mothers, mothers is what? Primary. Some of us talk about mothers. Some people get what? Angry. Anger is what? The byproduct of my mother. So I don't want to address what makes me angry about my mother. While I'm angry at, towards my mother, I can always stay what? Angry. Anger is always a second emotion. We got to address what makes us angry. If we don't, we'll stay angry. How about bargaining? Who try to bargain to stay there? Who's trying to bargain to stay there? On a plantation of what? Active addiction. With those places, with those people, and with those things. Bargaining. Everybody know what I'm talking about? I'm not going to use drugs. I'm just going to sell them. Bargaining. It's like a girl who's selling her body. I'm not going to walk the streets. I'm just going to be a call girl. Bargaining. Same thing. You're still giving it up. Because if you're in a hotel or you're on the street walking, a flip phone or a pay phone, you're still doing the same thing. Anybody trying to bargain to what? To stay here. To do less of, oh, I used to shoot dope and I'm going to smoke weed. I used to smoke crack. Let me get drunk. Bargaining to stay here. I'm not, listen, I'm, I'm not, no, I'm just going to send people to Lowe's and show them how to steal out of Lowe's or Home Depot. And they just break me off some. Let's keep moving. All right. Anger and what? Bargaining. Seven stages of grief. I, wanna, I don't want to leave here, but I got to leave here, but I'm just trying to bargain to stay there a little bit longer. How about reflection? Who reflect on what we used to do? Who reflect on where we come from? Who reflect on the people we entertain? And reflection? And when we reflect, that brings on what? Loneliness. Who's lonely? Anybody lonely? Anybody lonely? This right here is excitement. To leave that, we could come what? Lonely. We reflect on the good times we had, the girls we had, the money we had, the clothes we had, the travel we did, all of that. Running from the police, making a fool out of the god goddamn cops, all that madness. And now I'm, now I'm no longer a part of this. Now I'm what? Lonely. And I don't know what to do, what to ask for, or what's my next move. How about depression? And that can lead over to what? To depression. <laughs> So I reflect on it. I'm lonely from the reflection. Then I'm what? Depressed. Anybody depressed? Anybody depressed? Nobody get depressed? Yeah. How do you kill your depression? How do you kill, the, you kill depression? Look, right here. Huh? Depression. All right? What, I mean, you got situational depression. She leaves me. I can get depressed. He leaves her. She can get depressed. I passed, my, I failed my tests. I can't get my CDLs. That's situational depression, all right? Somebody dies, situational depression, right? Um, seasonal affective disorder, anybody got that when it comes to depression? People that's no longer here, birthdays, I reflect on what? Them. Walk through your house and a person who's no longer in your house. It's like an em empty nest syndrome and that could cause what? Slight mild depression. Some of us, it's less sunlight during some times of the years when the earth starts moving on the axis, axle away from the sun. And some of us clinically get what? Depressed. Seasonal affective disorder. Certain smells, certain smells or seasons. What mom, how mom used to cook or how what dad used to do and how he used to remember his voice and his jokes he used to tell. He's no longer here. Seasonal affective disorder can cause me to slip into what? Depression. How about the depression women get when they have babies before or after? Postpartum. The girl Andrea Yates had five kids. When she had four kids, the doctor said, you're clinically deep depressed. Please don't have no more children. She had a fifth child. She's screaming out for help. Help really didn't come. She named every one of her children out the Bible. Couldn't take it no more. She snapped, drunk, drowned every one last of her children mm -hmm. and put them on a the bed like stuffed animals. Andrea Yates. True story. Depression. On the being what? Depressed. Always talking about Robin Williams. How Robin Williams made the world laugh. Mook and Mindy. Jumanji. Papa. Listen, the list goes on and on. Asamia. The Awakening. 
Right, good morning, Vietnam, Cadillac Man, Bicentennial Man, the angriest man in Brooklyn. You know, the list goes on and on. Dead Poet Society, Goodwill Hunting, made the world laugh, but he was what? Depressed. Don Cornelius stuck his hands in his pocket and pulled out $400 and started Soul Train. And as he got older, he got sicker, then he blew his brains out. Kurt Cobain, they said that was a quote-unquote smelly situation. They said he took his life, but they said they was right. Well, you, you know, it's more investigation, et cetera, et cetera. But it's just what they say doesn't mean it really happened that way. The 27 Club, Janis Joplin, you know, Kurt Cobain, Amy Winehouse, and, Jan and, and, and what's the other girl there? And Janis Joplin, Amy Winehouse, Jimi Hendrix, and Kurt Cobain, the 27 Club, and Jim Morrison. And Jim Wilson from the doors. Come on, brother. Belushi. Um, John Belushi, right. One thing I relate to recovery and what you're speaking about is uh, military members getting out. Yes. They have some of the highest suicide rates, and it's because they leave their old life behind. They don't know who they are when they get out, and they mm. just don't see that purpose, or then they, they just fall short and end up just taking their lives. And, Very good. Uh, so you a military man? Yeah, Marine Corps. Okay. You ever go through that? I did, but I, I mitigated it. I, when I got out, I went to Alaska. I, I, I decided to get away first before I just jumped, hopped back into uh, like society, and that was good for me. Very good, right? Because some guys they were saying when, when he be they be dreaming and they, they they have adrenal dreams and jump out of their dream and snap and you know grab their woman. Really? Yeah, right. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, brother. Forgot about the military. I'm a I'm a son. My father was in Vietnam. He don't talk too much about that though. You don't talk too much about that. Uh, are you scared or are you committed to keep your mouth closed? I mean, I'll be challenging them. But at 180, who here ready to do a 180? Who ready to change? Who looking at this differently? Anybody catch that? I'm looking at people differently. When I see drug dealers on the corner, I don't see drug dealers. I see lawyers. I see doctors. I see governors. I see the next um, president. I see CEOs on the corner who's trapped in the matrix selling death to their people. I see them different. I see places different. Everybody hear that? I see things different. Today I do. All right? I'm doing a 180. I'm not the same individual I used to be. How about the next one right here? Reconstruction. Who's working? The reconstruction, I mean, that's the breaking process. We go here. Let's go here with fear. We break the fear down with the opposite will be faith. Who's afraid of the unfamiliar? Who's afraid of the unfamiliar? The unfamiliar is not, well, I'm familiar with the things, I'm familiar with the places, I'm familiar with the people, but the unfamiliar caused me to have what? Fear. You can see, I'm putting my glasses up here. Everybody see my glasses? These glasses are called perceptions. Who got a pair of these? Perceptions. Everybody should have a pair of these. Everybody do. Perceptions. How you see it is how you treat it. Some people see fear as what? Face everything and recover. Some people say F everything and what? Run. How do you see fear? I face it to fight it. Fight it, defeat it. Defeat it, victory, victory, testimony. Never have one if I'm always running. So how do we see fear? Are we afraid of the unfamiliar? To leave this, we're dealing with unfamiliar people, unfamiliar things, and unfamiliar places. Who's afraid to change? Anybody afraid to change? Who still want to be that same individual but clean? Can you stay clean that way? Being the same man and the same woman, the one who got us high, now we stop getting the high. But if I'm that same individual, will it make me get high again? Can it cause me to get high again? Yes, it can. Who disagree? Okay, so change. What about us that we need to change? Anybody? Everything. Everything. <laughs> I like specifics. <laughs> I know you're right, but we know we do. Uh, huh? They perspective or what? How you look at the situation. All right, let's start there. Anybody got to look at things differently? Your perspective, how you see things? Very good. Who know hurt people hurt people? Before you saw your mother or your father as a monster who didn't care. Now when you did the work on what? How they were raised, how they were hurt. That they didn't have no outlet. They didn't, might not have uh, nobody to talk to. So they only gave to us what was given to them. So I see them different new perspective. Everybody catch that. How I see my mother and see my father. Not as what? Animals, just people, humans who did what? Who try to survive the best they could. 
new perspective. How about, um, let's go here. The fear piece. Afraid of what? Change. Let me see what's another thing. How about gossip? Who gossip in here? How many men got another man's name on your lips and another man's ears? Nobody. Yeah, nobody. Hey, do men gossip like women? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I'm guilty of that, too. I'm guilty of that. I'm getting much better with that. How about slanderizing people's reputation because you're mad at somebody? Slanderizing. Who be blogging on people? You better know what I'm talking about? Your lips is like Fox News, CNN News. You can't hold water. Yeah. You hate that person. You're going to make sure that they feel the, the rage and the hate that you have for them. You better know what I'm talking about? Change. We got to change. Who knows that kids don't learn from what we tell them? They learn from what we what? Show them. So even though if I'm changing, I'm not just changing for me. I'm changing for who? The kids. How many fathers you know that you know, they be in the football stands telling them, put my son back in the game? They more animated than their son is. Like, damn, dad, calm down. How about mothers driving their daughters to fights? What she do? What she had on? I'm going to get that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Parents more animated than what? The children. Kids learn from what we show them. All right, they can hear you talking, but which is what you show them. Change. Change we must or die we will. How about impatience? Who want it right now? Anybody? Who working on patience? Is that important? What happens when we lose patience? Anybody? Who had road rage in here? Who drive? Anybody got road rage? <laughs> my mama said you could be dead right you hear what I'm talking about you could be dead right it's your turn but guess somebody take it and you said no you ain't gonna take it and die we could be dead right pride okay fear change number one under change is what pre-contemplation I don't have a problem yo stage two under change is what contemplation I do have a problem stage three is preparation to change the problem Number four is action for the problem. Five is what? Maintenance. When Michael Jordan finally got the formula to beat, to get a, um, go to the championship and win the championship, he had the formula. The four was in inward position. The centers was in position. The point guard was in position. The shooting guard was in positions. The small forward and the power forward. The five-man team was had the formula of success. That's maintenance. And they maintain, maintained that in 91 against the Lakers. Maintained that in 92 against Portland. Maintained that in 93 against what? The Phoenix Suns. Took a break. Father got murdered. Came back. Lost. Maintained that same formula with Dennis Rodman now. Against the Seattle Supersonics. Thank you. And he won it on Father's Day. And maintain that formula for the next two seasons against the Utah Jazz. Once we get the formula, we got to maintain it. Because the last stage of change is what? Relapse. So if I fail to maintain the action I prepare for, I will always relapse. All under what? Change. Change we must or die we will. Who's afraid of success? Who's afraid of success? What's success for you? Because success is different for everybody. Anybody? What's success for you? This is not success. I thought it was. To change this is successful. Everybody know what I'm talking about? That's successful. To walk away from this. To not talk about this. Not to condemn the people that are still over there. Not to judge them or hate on them or forget where I come from. But to make things better by coming out of it to bring other people out. And that could be a success just from people and places and those things. Success. Perception. How do you see success? as having a million dollars or be rich in spirit. Real important. How you see it is how you treat it. Who's afraid of failure? Who's afraid of failure so you never try? Get on your marks, get set, we never go. Your hand was up? Your hand was up right here? Yeah. What you afraid about failure? What's, what about failure you afraid of? As a mental, okay. All right, but let me ask you this: How do you see failure? Is failure are you a failure or you are are you winning? Are you learning? When you when we fail, are you learning or are you just a failure? How do you see it? Very be good. You have a relapse. You learn from your relapse. 
right. Look, I'm like me. When I <laughs> when I learned from my relapse, I learned that I was cocky. I had to learn to tone it down. That's what I'm talking about. And two, I relapse. I couldn't see me until I relapse. All right. All right. I'm going to stop you clean. Hey, all right. God bless you. God bless you. Afraid of what? Fair. Who am afraid of loss? Who's afraid to lose? Take a loss. Who's afraid of identity? Oh, over there had identity. Those nicknames. Oh, I forgot to put that up there. Nicknames. Who's still holding on to their nicknames? Those street names we used to call ourselves. Anybody got nicknames? The wrench, the hammer. <laughs> Half dead. I wish you would. Nicknames. <laughs> uh, gorilla ass. Nicknames. <laughs> you know, the, the names we got to what? Stop calling ourselves because that's not us no more. All right? Afraid of what? Loss of what? Identity. How about reputation? Anybody got reputation on the streets? Anybody got reputation? Okay, loss. How about loss of strength? Who feel weak since you left this right here? A loss of strength. A loss of motivation. Anybody lost their motivation to recover? Anybody? Okay. Loss of identity, loss of reputation, a loss of strength. How about loss of what? Joy or happiness. How about health? Ain't my health ain't 100%. Anybody got back nerves? Nerves. Slip this. How about when you take your shoes off, your socks off, you see onions and cunt bunions and coins in them? I don't know about y'all. Who used to walk the other side of the earth just to get a nickel bag and get burnt when you got it? Nobody? Who remember being out there all day long when the rooster crows, you was up until the sun went down and we still didn't have $10? Anybody remember those days? Yes. Who remember having their clothes on for multiple days just to finally get a bag? I take your clothes off, you heard noise. Yeah. I remember those days right there, right? And, and why do I want to keep what? Vacillating from... Success to failure. Success to failure. Because when some people say, I get success just to lose it. It's like sand in my hand. But guess what? Every level, there's a devil. Every level is a devil. And when I fail, I'm still winning. Anybody hear that? Because I'm learning from my what? My failure. God, show me where I went wrong. Was I cocky? Was I self-righteous? Was I controlled in the situation? Was I half listening? Was, did I, I didn't ask enough questions? Show me where I went wrong. So I'm still winning because I'm getting answers for my questions. When we fail, we winning. We got to fail to win. Is that true? We got to lose to win. We got to leave that to win. You got to leave him to get a better man. Leave her to get a better woman. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, without a doubt, we stay there. We miss our blessings because we think that's it. But the devil is a liar. How about pride? Who's prideful in here? King and queen babies. Any king and queen babies in here? Nobody. When you can't get your way, you start crying, flipping over tables, punching refrigerators, walking out of meetings. Come on, nobody. Yeah. Okay. You getting better with that? No. <laughs> I don't know. All right. You ain't trying to get better with that? All right. That's what's up. Okay. How you doing, my friend? All right. How much time you got clean, soldier? Yeah. Hey, give it to all. Got a lot of time. God bless you, brother. Pride. Who hide their pain? Who hide their pain and their weakness? Why? Why is that dangerous to hide it instead of talking about it? You used to? Yeah. Okay. 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 He still do, you say? Yeah. Hide the pain? Okay. Not to hurt nobody. Okay. All right. How much? How about you, brother? Same thing. Okay. Who know pain shared is pain lessened? If you if we don't if we if we don't talk about it, we can we can get violent. Everybody hear that? <laughs> but see, talking violent can bring anger too, though. Right. You know, sometimes it's best not to talk about it. Ah, that's true. Everybody hear that? She said sometimes that can bring violence. Mm -hmm. Right. But but if I get it out of me, I can feel better. You ever do that before? I mean, you share, you got, because you right. talked about it. Who you talking to about? Okay. Who you talking to about it? Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, that's good. I'm glad we all coming alive here. That's good. All right. I thought everybody was medicated. All right. <laughs> Yo, pain. <laughs> pain is good. Everybody hear that? All right? Listen, you never know where you added to what? You catch pain. All right? Painful. Look at the eagles. 
Painful seasons, but look at them now. What are they going to do with Dallas on, on Sunday? They are they? Dallas going to bust their ass. Oh. <laughs> I should go Dallas fan, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, that's going to be a good one. All right, well, I'll see you in two weeks. We'll talk about it then. <laughs> that's going to be a good game. All right, pain. All right, pain. Listen, what, what's another good example of pain? Anybody got examples of pain? How somebody been through pain? They talk about their pain. They felt better with the pain. Anybody? How about the guy, the pianist? The penis. The penis. <laughs> I hate trying hate try to make the tip to try to say that movie. Right? The guy who played the piano. And he played the piano, and guess what? He was a Jew. He played the piano, and he played for a Nazi. But guess what? He played out of what? All his pain. And by playing out of his pain, the Nazi was in awe about how he played on the what? The piano. And guess what? The, the Nazi was in what? In awe. And he left him alone. And even though the war was over and the Russians was coming for the Germans to do what the Germans did to the what? To the Jews. He said, yo, Andy gave him a coat. Andy gave him some food. And that was a beautiful movie right there. But he played out his pain. Pain makes beautiful melodies. Look at Mary J. Blige. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Look at the Beatles. Look at Big Pun. Rest in peace. Biggie Smalls. Rest in peace. Tupac Shakur. Rest in peace. The Wu-Tang Clan. Rest, no, they still together. They call it old dirty bastard. Rest in peace. Mm-hmm. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yo, the list goes on and on. Pain. Produce hip hop. Out of their pain, they write. Graffiti is a form of what? Art. A what? Illustrating what? Their pain. If you can't talk it, write it. Can't write it, journal. Who do music? But we got to get that pain that hurt out of us. Who hide their weakness? Prideful men and women hide their weakness. Is that true? Yeah. Don't want to be what? Vulnerable. How many men in here cry in front of your woman? Does I cry? I'll wait. <laughs> 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 Who cried when they saw E.T.? <laughs> Who cried when they saw Color Purple? <laughs> when I watched Color Purple from the beginning to the end, it got real emotional. I remember when I remember Oprah Winfrey hit that guy and hit, he punched that guy in the face, and the guy cop came out of there and hit it in the head with the butt of the gun. Then he, they attached her life to a, a Caucasian lady wife life forever. And I remember that she came to come see her family, and the Caucasian lady said, "Okay, I see you in a couple of hours," but she couldn't get the car out of reverse. And all the black guys started approaching her. She started flipping out. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. They were just trying to help her get her car to drive off. But Whoopi Goldberg, I mean, Oprah Winfrey, she didn't spend like five minutes with her family to get back in the car and roll out. I remember the scene when she was in there trying to get groceries for the same lady that she was working for. And, and Whoopi Goldberg came out of nowhere and started getting everything for her. And by the time they sat down at the table at the end of the movie, she said, thank you. I want to thank you for being there for me. Real emotional. How Danny Glover was beating her up through the whole movie. Disrespecting her. Brought another woman in, up in a joint. She said, he sure is ugly. Perspective. Because when they got together, she said, yo, you, 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 ain't, you ain't ugly. And they wind up slept together. I love have mercy. And then when, when she pulled the knife, I said, you know, nothing good will come to you until you start to do right by what? Me. And when she got her esteem together and she had support to leave, she left him. Because Danny Glover was a bum before he met her. And if he turned back to the bum, he was. But in his wickedness, there was righteousness for him to go to the chicken coop, get money he stashed, go to immigration, send for her kids from Africa to bring them to the plantation. And when she was on the front steps, she looked at Danny Glover, looking at her, because she knew he was responsible for getting her kids back to her. And tears started to come down my eyes. How about set it off? Oh, yeah. When everybody died except Jada. Good movie. Good movie. Prideful people don't want to what? They don't want to expose their weakness. I used to be like that. But today I do. I look at the tape and I see me. Dirk, you speed talk. Dirk, you need to slow it down. Weakness. Dirk, your volume, you got an outside volume inside the house. My passion takes my volume up. They be yelling and screaming. What the hell are you yelling for? Just say it without yelling. So, <laughs> so I'm learning about that. That's my objective. Keep it down, tone it down, and still communicate. I got dentures in my mouth. I'm looking for implants. I'm trying to pick up a dental uh, plan that can, you know, successfully give me implants. I have to go through all of this in and out madness and all that madness. Weakness. Weakness. Everybody got them? Everybody scared to talk about them? Weakness. Who get weak when it comes to people, places, and things? 
when you're around a person too long, you always say, yeah, let me see that blunt. They, they only piss us when. We only, we do, they only piss us. <laughs> yeah, people, places, and things. All right, okay. All right, how about that? Who don't like constructive criticism? Mm-hmm. Nobody like constructive criticism? Depends on who's giving it. You like it? Depends on who? It depends on who's giving it and how they deliver it. Okay, all right, okay, all right. How, how, how much time you got, Clay? Um, like, since February 15th of 2022 for heroin. Uh-huh. And I got three months from that. Hey, all right, God bless you. Congratulations. What'd you say, brother? what you were saying? Constructive criticism. Oh, excuse me. You got it's a good thing? Right. Very good. How much time you got, Clay? Hey, all right. God bless you. Constructive criticism is very good. Those who those who love us tell us what we need to hear. Anybody hear that? Yep. Yes men and yes women will help us die. Anybody understand that? Who got a bunch of yes men around you? That's dangerous. I know I need somebody to go to call me on my mess. Yeah. Anybody hear that? I, if you love me, tell me what I need. I'll be mad. Be mad at me, but listen, save my life. Save my life. Don't sugarcoat my mess. Yeah. Don't tell me what I want to hear. Don't try to be my friend because I got a cigarette. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. Constructive criticism. We all need it because we all got issues and we all got character defects. Nobody's great. Nobody walk on water. No, everybody bleeds. No halos on nobody hears. Nobody fly in space. We all what? A, con- a, 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 a what? Vulnerable to what? To contempt. Constructive criticism. We all need it if we want to get better. How about this right here? Who'd like to, who'd like to be challenged? Who'd like to be challenged? Why is that a good to be challenged? Anybody know what I'm talking about? They come out of our comfort zone. Anybody in their comfort zone and don't like to be challenged or be stretched? Why? Why is that? Why is that important to be challenged? Anybody? Growth. Say it again. Growth. It's growth, right? Who here don't read, but you need to read? And just when you pick up a book, your mind open up. Who read those ghetto novels? Three white girls in Frankfurt. <laughs> 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 Where my gun at? <laughs> yeah, Yo, know, those ghetto novels, all right? All right, okay. Welfare chicks, your know, ghetto novels, all right? I'm challenged. I love to be challenged. Anybody hear that? And listen, having dogs challenge me. Having a family challenge me. Being responsible challenge me. Not to be what? Selfish and self-centered and self-righteous. So those obstacles, those situations cause me to what? Think outside of the box. And I can't do what I used to do. Because now I'm being challenged to move another way, to grow up. Anybody here? How about who would like to be corrected? You don't? No. Why? Annoying. What'd she say? Annoying. It's annoying? <laughs> uh, it's annoying. Okay, she don't learn from no relapse. Okay. <laughs> How old are you? Seven. Okay, yeah. Okay, all right. And do you have friends? Do you want friends? No. <laughs> okay. Do you need somebody in your life? Uh, all right, that's what's up. Okay, all right, okay, all right. You look at her? Okay. This is the support. Okay, support, all right. Outside of here. Okay, that's good. Okay, all right, that's what's up. Okay, all right. Who rationalizes? Who try to make sense out of nonsense? No. No. Uh-huh. Yes. Anybody getting better with that? Anybody getting better with that? What you say, Queen? No, I said if it don't make sense, it don't make dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it don't make sense, all right. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. I heard that before. How much time you got, Queen? We did. It's, it's, it's all right. How much time you got, Queen? Queen? Wow. Give it to her. <laughs> This is a glass house. We don't throw stones. We love you. I like to be honest. Yes. That's how, that's how recovery works, all right? We love you, all right? This is a glass house. We ain't judging, all right? We ain't judging. Who make excuses? Anybody make excuses? I try to make them. Yes. All right. Not to show up. Anybody got somebody that's sick? 
They make excuses not to go share, not to go see him. And I got sick and, and, and loved ones that's sick making excuses. How about who got to get their um, CDLs? Who got to go pay tickets? Things we make excuses for. Who got to clean the bathroom up? Who got to clean the shed up? Who got to clean the bathroom? Who house need to get painted and make excuses not to do? Am I know what I'm talking about? Who need to get the job? Who need to stop complaining? Who need to get them off their ass and making excuses not to do what they need to be doing? Nobody? <laughs> Thank you. What's up? What you make excuses like when it come to what? Say it again. What you make excuses for? Getting up. Uh... Getting motivated, uh -huh. you know, work. Uh -huh. you know, uh, like the other day, I finally got up and stopped making excuses and actually built my resume. You know? Very good. Very good. Very good. How much time y'all clean, brother? I got about a year now. Hey, all right. Thank you. My man. Everybody hear that? I love when people talk, man. I'm telling you, be surprised when you bless up in the, up in the room. How about this right here? Who bite the hand that feed them? Prideful individual, they bite the hand that feeds them. Anybody self-righteous? They bite the hand that feeds them. Anybody don't put anybody hand be like, who had people come live with you? <laughs> right. And because they were family, they thought they can what? Eat your food without replacing mm -hmm. or get have the opportunity to put money back or put food back into the so house. Like you know, they family. Without a doubt. Exactly. Not cleaning up the house. You know what I'm talking about? Now I'm frustrated. Now I'm angry. Now I'm mad at me because I said what? Yes. When I should have said what? No. That's a true story right there. All right? For real. Bite the hand at what? That feeds them. Okay? What time we at? 12.08. Okay. Y'all going to 1 o'clock? I can't go that long. All right. Let's go. Let's go ahead. Let's go, we go to. Um, um, do, let's go to like twelve fifteen. I'm, I'm gonna beat it. That's cool. All right. Solutions. All right. To leave this alone. All right. To get better with the people, places, and things. I gotta pray. Is that important? Yeah. Who praying here? Is that important? Yeah. All right. Who had foxhole prayers? Foxhole prayers. All right. I hope that cocaine soap. <laughs> <laughs> Fox over. I hope I don't get sheet rock this time. Or oodles and noodles. Say my don't talk about? Yes, all right. <laughs> I hope this dope is the real dope. Everybody hear that? Don't talk about? Yeah, okay, all right, okay. Fox over prayers. Who was boosting and you was dope sick? And you prayed that we didn't get what? Locked up. Anybody driving, you was dirty and you saw blue lights behind your car, but it went right past oh, you. Yes. Foxhole prayers. Nice. Anybody get robbed? I had a gun in my face. I got robbed once. Mm -hmm. Took everything from me, but he didn't shoot me. Foxhole prayers. Now my prayers are what? Sincere. I sincerely pray today, right? For guidance, for help, to, for restoration, for salvation, for, to be delivered from the disease of addiction, to raise up people in my life who have my best interests at heart. Forgive me for, 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 um, for, uh, for, for idolatry worshiping, putting people before my higher power. Putting her before you, putting things before you, putting places before you, putting people before you. I apologize. I'm sorry. Forgiveness. I pray sincerely. How about patience? Who working on patience? Mm -hmm. Is that important to have patience? Mm -hmm. What happens when we lose patience? Have to fuck up. Without a doubt. That's real. That's right. Okay. When we lose patience, we become impatient. Uh huh. All right. Who been to pen dot at the 10 o'clock? Yeah. Who been locked up? Forced to be patient. Who like Chick-fil-A? <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> You're going to wait at Chick-fil-A. One girl got excited. She said, I was at Chick-fil-A. Listen, nobody was there. I was the first one in line. It was Sunday. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. <laughs> now I forgot you said that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she said that. Yeah, that's right. She said it was Sunday. Yo, she said the first one in line, they were closed. I've done that more than once. Oh, man. Patience is so important, yo. When our kids get, when our kids are diagnosed with ADHD, we got to have patience. You know what I'm saying? Comedian. Tell two, co two comedians can tell the same joke, but one rushed the joke, he kills the joke. But the one who has patience to tell the joke, he deliver a beautiful joke. Patience is so important, all right? How about perseverance? Perseverance. Who had drug dreams? Who get craving attacks? Who got more bills than money? 
persevere. I don't give a damn what happened, we don't get high. All right? Sometimes we got to drive past these people, these places, and these things. Just to what? Have a day clean. We persevere through all storms. How about humility? You're working on being humble, asking for help, being vulnerable, killing our pride. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Asking for help. Because I cannot do it by what? Myself. Myself. How about honesty? In spite of what you learn here, rules and regulations, urines, P.O. fur, you're still going to do you. Mm-hmm. Honesty. I'm still going to get high. I'm still going to smoke weed. I'm still going to get drunk. I still might sell drugs. Uh, Anybody here like that? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just because we think it doesn't mean we're going to do it. We'll go to the bank and feel like jumping over that counter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you about it, but it doesn't mean we're going to act out on it. Everybody understand what I'm talking about? All right, okay. Person of humility. Ask, oh, stay honest. Got to stay honest. Yeah. This was in the wild, wild, and Loomis guy was filling up a Mac machine. I'm like, this shit. Yeah. Old bag with him for you. So much money. I'm like, just get the fuck out of here. Without a doubt. <laughs> that reminds me of what you would call it. Uh, what's the thing with De- Robert De Niro and Billy Crystal? Analyze this. Yeah. When he had a job. <laughs> he was trying to get a job. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was thinking about all that stuff like that. Tying a person up and all of that. Uh, had a Jewish cap on. <laughs> Going in the safe and get the diamonds and tying them up. And, and you know, spray paint the camera. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Let's go here. All right. What's another one? How about purpose? Who know their purpose? Out of this. Coming out of this right here. Did we get our purpose? A lot of this makes us. Anybody hear that? It makes us to the people that we are today. Uh So we move negatively to move positively to find our purpose to help other people who might be still here. Who's the best advocate to help another drug addict? A person who walked and lived that life. Uh Anybody hear that? Certified peer specialist. Anybody interested? BH10. Anybody interested? Anybody got a license? Horizon House. They got a whole list full of jobs at Horizon House in this field right here. You got a license, you drive their vehicles, pick up their clients, they got SSI houses, and take them to the park, take them to the movies, take them to the zoo, feed them, medicate them, punch out, get a check at Horizon House. And Horizon House move in different counties. They might got one out here in Brookhaven and Chester. But check that out if that's you and you're bored. And the uh, boredom definitely will lead me back on the plantation of active addiction. Stay in prayer, stay patient, persevere through all storms. Stay humble, ask for help. Stay honest, I don't give a damn because recovery never begins until I'm honest. And she got honest, she said four hours, that's a beautiful thing. How about another thing, forgiveness? Is it for them or for us? Right. Easy said than what? Right. right. If I don't forgive, can I get high again? If I still got grudges, can that be in the way of me recovering? Mm-hmm. Yes or no? Yeah, you can. Resentment. It's just okay. Resentments? Okay. You still can get high? You can no, go, you still can recover. You still can recover. You can okay. compartmentalize it. I still got resentments, but I'm still going to recover. Yeah. Everybody hear that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm still holding grudges. I'm still holding grudges. But if I want to get totally free, I got to learn to leave that alone right there. All right? That forgiveness you piece. Give you got to give it to God. Give it to God. Very good. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanks for sharing that. Got to give it the high power. That's too much. That's too much weight to carry. How about how about faith? Who faith is being tested? Mm-hmm. Yes. You winning? Yes. Oh, most definitely. Okay. You know, but I just, you know, like I'm, I haven't having a really like negative day right now. Like I, I just got you know a little bit of the fuckets and you know. For real. Son. I mean. It's not in the danger zone or anything, but um, you know, I just got a little bit of a negative attitude for a couple reasons right now. And, okay. You know, I think I'm justified to feel the way I do. Right, right. I get you know, those moments. But um, you know, and I'm always positive. You know what I mean? Usually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but some things are out of my hands. Right. Let me ask you this: Do you know about? Do you know that the enemy, right? The enemy works through people to to get us. Mm-hmm. You believe that? Yep. All right. So, Absolutely. Right. So when we're on the road to what? Recovery. Get ready for turbulence. Mm-hmm. Are people going to stop coming to what? To push those buttons. Yeah. Very good. Faith. Last one, y'all, is love. Agape love. Everybody love themselves in there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very good. When we love ourselves, what we do? Do we get high? Yeah, you still, you still like some you people still, still get high, high, man. I mean, it still happens. <laughs> hey, look. I, I love, love myself, but, but I'm 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to drink. Now you going to drink? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. For me, for me, I love me. I don't put no poison in me. You feel what I'm saying? That's, that's where I'm at today. You feel what I'm saying? I try to keep myself in good positions mm -hmm. to help myself and to help others that's connected to me. You know what I'm saying? I take my meds. When I take my meds, I try to get that's right. Who get rest in here? Who get sleep? Who trying to eat right? Sis right here, I'm ready to order a whole package. She just, I just told her, right? She makes this right here, mango. This is real good right here. This is sea moss. Sea moss mango. And I'm trying to eat right. Everybody hear that? My cooler right here, I'm trying to make it a six pack. I'm going to put work in. You got something? Lifting weights and all of that. Mm -hmm. Eating right. Getting sleep and eating. That's good for what? Recovery. Is that true? Yeah. Exercising. Anybody go to the gym and run? How good you feel when you start running? Yeah. Lifting weights. It releases what? Adrenalines and serotonins and what? You feel good That's when you exercise started. and when you eat good. <laughs> Say that again? That's where my addiction started. When? When I, I was in my 20s, I was addicted to working out. I was addicted to starving myself, like everything. Like I would work out like four hours a day. Uh -huh. You know, that's where it started. That and then shopping and then... Oh, okay, I got you, Sam. Addicted to exercising, mm -hmm. I got you. And there's something else, okay. But it's all about balance. Yeah, I've learned, you know, a lot more balance in my life now, you know, but just everything was, you know, to the extreme right. you know, before, but yeah. I understand so. that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good food. Good food, sis. Listen, everybody good? Remember, y'all, people, places, and things. It starts with us. We take us everywhere we go. If I have a new mind and a new heart, I find new people, new places, and new things. If I had the same mind, the same uncircumcised heart, I would still entertain this right here and always get what I always got because I'm still doing what I always did. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. How my sister doing when we used to be in that little wheelchair? Not the wheelchair. Is she all right? I ain't oh, see her. Lorraine. Yeah, she okay? All right, okay. I'll be looking for the Mr. People that's not here today. That was a little guy, a little funny guy that used to be in the back right there. Listen, <laughs> anybody looking for work? <laughs> Am I looking for work? Hey, um, who hiring? JBS. Who don't like killing animals? Slaughterhouse is hiring. JBS. You don't have to be on the killing floor. You could be, you get the meat ready for the supermarkets. That's 215-723-5555. They pay $18 plus. You can call them right now and set up an interview. They got three shifts. You don't have to kill the animals. You could be on the cleanup floor, getting it for the soup, ready for the supermarkets, pallets, tractor trailers, it's track the trailers and get it to the what? To the supermarkets. That's JBS. That's my phone right back there. Uh, who else hired? Oh, let me see. Um, Twit card. Who know about the Twit card? T W I C. Twit card. They pay like twenty two dollars plus. That's the Longshoremen's. The Longshoremen. You can be locked up. You can have a racket, a jacket, and all that. As long as you don't have terroristic threats on your jacket. All right. But on the docks, PA, New Jersey, Delaware. They make big money. And I think the Twit card costs no more than $150, but you will never, miss, you will miss that quickly once you get hired on the docks. That's a lot of good money down on the docks. Women How down there. How fast can you get that? Uh, you can get that right money. away. You got the money, huh? You go up to the joint and get it down. Right there on the Delaware Avenue, right there. Delaware Avenue. Go in there and get it. For right. $50, as long as you got your ID and some credit card. You hear that? Get your Twit. And then you, because I was working down the docks at um, Eddie Stone. Okay. In terminals. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What was y'all doing down there? Just um, helping um, unload the, um, the trailers when they get off the ship. Uh -huh. you know I mean? They paid the every week. On the bottom. We just put the box on the bottom. They paid yeah. every week. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You hear that, sis? You can get the car today. You got the money? Yes. It's called Twit Card. All right? Down on Delaware Avenue. Right. That's a good investment right there. Huh? I, heard, I got a buddy in uh, Philly. He was, he was making close to 100K down there. Anybody hear that? Big money down there. So Big money you down there. Chocolate Factory hiring? Okay. Would you? I did hear that the other day. Uh, Keystone? Eddie Stone. Eddie Stone. Eddie Stone. Eddie Stone. All right. What you were saying, sis? So after you get the card, would you put the application in online? or you How they work? Tell them my man right here. He says, you, once you get the Twit card, what you do? You just got to go to the shipyard and fill that out. You know, you got the Twit card. I had to tell you why. You hear that? that so you need the Twit card to walk on the dock. Okay. You ain't supposed to walk on the docks unless you got the twit. Okay. You can, you can work out there, but you can't walk on the docks. It's T W I C. I C. Right. So you hear that? Get the card. Go for the app out. All right. Anybody looking for housing? Anybody looking for housing? Who got? Y'all got case managers? I heard if you get a case manager, they can help you get a PHA voucher. 
A lot of landlords is not accepting, but I know a lady who's accepting PHA vouchers. But your, your case managers can set you up to get yourself a PHA voucher, all right, for those who are looking for housing. Who heard about back on my feet? Last one, back on my feet. You walk or run five miles a day. You're losing weight, and you what? And they give you new sneakers and sweatsuits, and they help you with your rent. And they help furnish your place. It's called Back on My Feet, 100 South Broad Street, the land entitlement building down Center City, all right? And for those who got trauma issues in the same building, it's called JJPI. Good program, 100 South Broad Street, all right? Both of those programs are in one building, all right? Everybody good? Mm -hmm. All right, I love y'all. Two weeks, new topic, same passion. Who woke us up, y'all? God. God. Grant us serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will, not ours, be done. Amen. All right, y'all. All right. God bless. Take care. All right. Last week, we're going to break.